You've already got it started. Welcome to Tabernacle Tuesday. Here at the feast at uh, Moore's Resort. Everyone have a great day yesterday. That was fantastic, wasn't it? That was awesome. It's been terrific so far. You know, you wonder how much better could it get? And I'm excited to find out. And I think I'm going to be very happily surprised. Well, this morning, our, our song leader is Todd Durstein. We're going to turn it over to him, and he's going to lead us in our worship this morning. Okay. Now? Yeah, unless you want to start with an opening prayer as, as opposed to a couple of songs and then a prayer. How would you like to do it? I'll do an opening prayer. You want to do an opening prayer first? Well, we'll, we'll call someone up to do an opening prayer. Well, that's okay. We're, we're changing it up a little because we're, we're, we're led by the Spirit. Why don't, we're going to have Caroline Bunch open us up with prayer this morning. And then, and then Todd will lead us in worship. Got to come on up here, Caroline. We've got to see your pretty face. Nothing to apologize for? If you'll bow your head, please. Our Father, great loving creator God, we come before you so very thankful that you have allowed us to attend here, that you've opened up this feast site for a second year. We see the blessings. We feel your spirit and your presence all around us. And we want you to know we are so grateful and so very thankful that you are here and that you have given us the knowledge that you have. We ask that you continue to inspire our speakers, the ones that are doing the worship music for us as well, because we get so much inspiration and it fills our hearts and our souls with such joy. And we know that all of this is to honor you. And we are just so thankful that you are here with us. Please keep your, your spirit strong. Continue to help each and a, every one of us grow. And we love you and want you to know that. And we ask this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Before, before we start, um, I want you to ask yourself why God gives you an imagination. Because... At the festival, you're supposed to pro project yourself into the scenes in Revelation 5, Revelation 4, and at least four or five other places. Revelation 19, a mo made great multitude before the throne, and they're singing praises nonstop, day and night. And we're going to play out those scenes in reality someday. Now we play out those scenes through the imagination that God gives us. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so, sing as though he is here. <laughs> and that he's looking to see how we worship him from the heart. Page, page 33, in case uh, everybody didn't know the page. Oh. That helps. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing. Survey the ground I tread or gaze upon 
only thing that compares to that is being in the center of a sacred harp circle. <laughs> Has anybody been done, done shape notes singing? Did we have the, already had the opening prayer, page 77, if you'll turn there. The name of the hymn is The Mercy That Never Fails. All right, all you Irish, lead out. When my soul cries out with a heavy heart, oh God, again I fail. And you lift me up to the throne of grace with a mercy and Request out there. Congregational choice out of the hymnal. Yeah, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. No, no, hymnal. Uh, that's in the hymnal. <laughs> 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 I love it. What? Can't we do it just because we're enthusiastic? Oh, that's it. 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 That's Say. 
You guys sound great. And let's give it up for, for, for Todd. Thank you so much for leading us, tickling those ivories the way you, only you can. Okay, we have some special music. I had my sheet here. I don't know what happened to it. It got moved. We have some special music. We are going to have a special treat. We have Leanne Ellison and the Ellison kids. Jeannie Miller is going to accompany on piano, and they are going to sing to us what you pardon you're up how tall are they <laughs> no 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 Leanne Ellison and the Ellison kids and Janine Miller on piano and Nova and Nova Thank you, Nova. You gonna sing loud for us, right? Yeah. Yes. We're looking forward to that. Word 
fifth day he gave his word God said that's good The sixth day he made the light Animals, men and wife The sixth day he made the light God said that's good The seventh day he took a rest Sabbath day it was blessed the seventh day he took a rest God took a rest Oh God made the earth in seven days Seven days, seven days God made the earth in seven days God made the earth That was awesome. You guys are awesome. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Yeah, they made all of the stage props themselves. Wow, what an entertainment. Thank you, guys. Thank you so very, very much. We are blessed to have got to see that. Thank you so very much. You made this day so special. So special for all of us. Thank you, guys. That was great. Awesome. Boy, you just love it when the kids get up there and have that heart for God. And in a spiritual sense, that's how we're, we, we are to be with our Father Abba Yah in heaven. And uh, we're going to move on. We have a scripture reading for uh, Regina Durstein going to come up and read scripture for us. That is a hard act to follow. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, and so um, today, um, we're going to shift gears a little bit. So uh, I know you're all familiar with Ephesians 6, where it tells us to take on the whole armor of God and that you'll be able to withstand the evil day. And so there's a, there are a lot of different armaments we're told about, but... Um, I'm focusing in on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so um, I've been convicted personally that the Psalms would be, um, it'd be advantageous to my survival spiritually to memorize them, to commit them to heart, because uh, to endure to the end, we know even Yeshua at the end, very last moments of his life, he was he was uh, he had par he had the psalms in his mind and he was rehearsing them to God. So um, by his example, I know that. And there's another reason um, the psalms seem to be unique to me in that I think they're prepackaged pa uh, prayers for the righteous as they go through the tribulation. Isn't that wonderful that Yahweh has already written our prayers for us? And so how do, we, how do we commit them to memory and how do we bring them into our heart? One way is by reading them out loud in our, in our homes or even to ourselves, listening to them, not just reading them. Listen to them as you ride in your car. So all the different things, all the different ways you can engage your senses with them. And uh, Todd and I have even started, um, and we've noticed that if, if I would read one verse he can repeat sometimes the second, or, or he'll read, and then I can fill in the next one. And so we are learning it, even though we don't realize we are. So uh, there's another reason. Uh, the Psalms, um, I believe, are an antidote to fear. And fear will paralyze us so that we can't analyze or make decisions. And so we have, it's a way to fight against that one, fortify ourselves now so that we can call those to mind. And um, so I have um, one, ex one example of a psalm that I love. We're going to turn to Psalm 37. And I'm just going to read some key verses from Psalm 37. And I want you to hear how many promises are in here. And the reassurance, because God sees the end from the beginning. And it's, it's in every few verses here. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in Yahweh and do good. 
so shall you dwell in the land, and verily you shall be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto Yahweh, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass, and he will bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in Yahweh and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings the wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Yahweh, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, you shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And now we're going to go to verse 18. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke that will consume away. In verse 34, wait on Yahweh and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passes away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I, I sought him and couldn't find him. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked will be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. And the Lord will help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Okay, well, um, now I believe we're going to sing uh, uh, page 69, God will take care of you. <laughs> Yeah. 
those sopranos, they got lots of breath. <laughs> From the hymnal, a song to sing congregationally. Your favorite song in the red hymnal. What do you all want to sing? Is it in the hymnal? Yeah, it's got to be. Which one? From the hymnal today. 201. Two oh one, Darla. Spirit song. Everybody turning there? Two oh one. channel the John Beasley show a little bit. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is Amen. And we love John Beasley and they sent their love to us. Skip Martin woke me up about 4.30 this morning with a request for something that he wanted. Uh, that crazy slide I made of Blake for the complaint department. He liked it so much he has to speak today and so he decided that give me that slide so I can show it when I Got to give my message, so, uh, wow. Well, I have a little bit of good news for everybody. Yesterday I was so tickled pink by what had happened. Um, everything that we're able to do this year was the result of the blessings and the offerings that we received last year from the congregation. And we took up an offering yesterday, and all I can say is that we are not nuked, and we don't all have famine in the land, and our Father allows us to do this again next year. We will be able to do this again next year, and then some, and then some. So thank all of you, and that's what a family is able to do, to pull our resources together. So thanks to all of you, and our, on behalf of our father and a son and the, uh, the planning team, it's terrific. Yes, Diane? Just a quick question. People who maybe were not here yesterday, should they give their offering to 
There's a box in the back, or you can go and no, the box is already back there. The box is already back. No, see, I remembered after yesterday. I like no nope, boxes back there on the table, uh, or better yet, yeah, you can go give uh, John Wilson a giant bear hug and tackle him. Give it, give it, John Wilson. Uh, where is John? Yeah, you know John. Yeah, tackle John with a giant hug and just give it to him because he's the guy that processes everything uh, anyway. So just do that. that. That's fine. Then you get a hug and get to give your offering at the same time. But if you're not a huggy person, like I said, and you you want to give something, there's a box in the back and you can do it anonymously. That's fine. But offerings are done. We're all good, and we can. I, I, I'm going to pray that we can do this again next year, and we'll do it even grander. It'll be great. Okay, so uh, not as many announcements as yesterday because we're all kind of getting in the groove right now. Uh, for those that ordered T-shirts for the feast, we ordered festival shirts. They will be distributed this evening at game night. Again, tonight's a chili supper around six-ish. Uh, we're all going to eat chili and uh, soup and things like that here, and then after is game night, and that's when Erica's going to hand them out. If you order them, uh, you need to see Erica uh, at game night for how much uh, you owe for your shirts, and you can... No, they're not going to see you now. We're in the middle of services now. <laughs> see Erica at any time, and uh, you can pay by cash or check. Yeah, I'm reading your words. Um, I'm saying I added C later. Now I'm in trouble because I didn't read exactly what she wrote. You're such a legalist, Erica. <laughs> okay, so you can see Erica at any point, and she'll be happy to. There's John. You can tackle John at any time. Right, just let him come in. All right, but you just go run up and give him a big hug any time. You don't even have to have him. Just go hug John at any time you see John. Oh. Oh yes, when, when you receive your shirts tonight, we are requesting that you please wear them tomorrow afternoon at the picnic. So we have a big group photo. Everybody wearing the same shirt. It's going to be really cool. Um, so please do that. Speaking of that, uh, on the schedule, well, I'm going to go do it in order for today. Um, we had our, uh, this, this panel discussion this morning. I, thanks to everybody that was here and participated. I thought we could have gone the rest of the day with that, don't y'all? Yeah. We could have probably kept going all afternoon with that one, so thanks for all the participation. I love the interactivity. That's sharpening iron the right way. I loved it. Thanks so much for your participation there. Um, this afternoon, there's going to be another seminar in here, and it's going to be as good, if not better, because uh, Kara Wilson, who's uh, <clears throat> having her feast al fresco, Outside, out there on the patio, in the fresh air and the canopy, uh, her seminar this afternoon from 3 p.m., 3 to 5, uh, What is a Woman? And uh, she's going to go through that, and then she'll have time for interactivity at the end of her, uh, her message. And I know for those that were here last year that went to her afternoon seminar, wow. A lot of positive comments. People were really wowed by that. I highlighted the feast for a lot of folks, so you don't want to miss that. And uh, that's this afternoon at 3. And again, tonight, 6-ish. Bring your appetites from 6 to around 7.30-ish. Chili supper. Uh, I got chili, a crock pot of chili going. Mel's got one going. Uh, Joe has got one going. When we talked about doing a chili supper, I'm, like, I'm thinking of Joe. I'm going to beg Diane and Joe to come for his chili. And uh, there's going to be potato, I think potato soup is there, or tortilla soup. So we'll have a bunch of things. We'll have a good old time together. Cornbread and Fritos and all that good stuff. Good eating on a fall evening. So right here at the hall, bring your appetites. We're looking forward to having you. And then right after that, uh, Erica's favorite time of the year, bar none, game night at the feast. She brought games. If you have a favorite game that you want to bring and teach other people how to play, cards, or just come fellowship if you're like me, and board games are spelled B-O-R-E-D. Board <laughs> games. I'd rather fellowship. I'm not the big game type unless you get into the military strategy games, but that's not good for a fee. So, but come on out for fellowship and uh, all kinds of different games, and it'd be a great time to get together after we're filled with the, uh, the uh, chili supper. 
And then also tonight, uh, we had issues. Erica was in tears, felt so bad for my wife. We had so much, my living room was piled high and deep. I mean, almost to the ceiling with everything we had to bring to the feast. And we had, I had misplaced uh, her scavenger hunt. She typed out all the questions and things, and we, we looked everywhere. She went back to the house, tore the house about, we don't know. It's probably here in the bottom of a, a box or a bin or bottom of a crock pot somewhere that it got shelved, which is entirely possible. And, uh, but she's got it worked out, and uh, we'll get our scavenger hunt. Week-long scavenger hunt begins tonight, and you'll see Erica about that also, and she'll get you all going. And I can tell you, uh, because we've been blessed, that uh, there are great prizes that Erica has prepared. Everybody wins something, and some more than others. So it'll be fun for everyone if you'd like to do that. A lot of creativity is going to be involved in the scavenger hunt. Well, it's not just finding things. There's some creativity involved in it as well. Uh, tomorrow morning, the seminar uh, The seminar is one of the great things we do here at the Feast. Shirley Doss is giving us her seminar in the morning, Heart Knows. And from what I've heard, I've never heard her speak, but from what I hear from the outside, you have a reputation that follows you. We are looking forward to that. And that's at 9 a.m. tomorrow until whatever she's finished. And we're looking forward to seeing that. And uh, honestly, I think that's about all, all the announcements that I have. For today, I'm going to keep it kind of short so we can get into the message today. Anyone else? Eric, did I forget any messages or anything? Anyone else out there, the planning team that I had forgotten about? Oh, there's three, three different levels of scavenger hunt for little kids, intermediates, and uh, experts like Amanda. <laughs> the expert class, right. So we'll have that also. The other request that was made by a couple brethren is that uh, we're asking that for those folks that were sitting in the back, they made a nice, very polite request to please keep your interactive chatter during the course of uh, the, the, the message. Kind of keep it real quiet because they were having a hard time hearing in the back there. Kids, well, that, kids is kids. It happens. It is what it is. But for the, I think they were talking about the adults were having you know, comments about things, and they were requesting, please keep it. Well, lower so they can hear. We do have some folks in the comfortable chairs in the back that are having a hard time hearing. So. We can always move the comfortable, comfortable chairs up front. Yes, we could do that. If the folks in the back in the comfortable chairs want to be up front, we can move you all up front uh, if you'd like to do that. We, we are accommodating here. We want to be at the accommodating feast. So we want to do that as much as we can. And so um, that, thankfully, concludes me having to bore you to death with more announcements. So we're going to be graced with some special music, and it's going to be a treat. Todd and Regina have a special music for us. Whoops. And then afterwards, we will have the sermon today brought to us by Mr. Gary Hall. If, uh, if Carol can uh, answer the question, what is a woman? We may have to nominate her for the next Supreme Court Justice. <laughs> you, you recall the previous nominee uh, couldn't tell us who a woman or what a woman is, but uh, she, tried. Uh, she tried. But uh, anyway, uh, this, uh, this song would be most familiar to one lady in this audience, and that is Mel. You know who Marty Gitz is? I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, he's uh, out of Nashville and uh, started out in Brooklyn as an unbelieving Jew 50 years ago. And um, as a young man, he was an accomplished pianist in upstate New York at uh, Jewish re uh, retreats and places like this up in the Adirondacks and was very good at what he did. He was a very good singer, piano bar stylist, and, and uh, I don't know how much he traveled, but uh, he found Yeshua divinely. And uh, why would I mention that? Well, he's not just like any, most of us, you know, he's a Judahite. And you know, when the army of Israel went out, the first tribe to arise in the east was Judah. And uh, I think you're going to see why when you hear this. This is 
the quintessential song about the second coming and uh, has terrific, terrific meaning to the lyrics.
Now we're on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael and Bernard. Yeah, good deal. Try to talk loudly if possible. Okay. I hope everybody can hear me. I, I'm, I'm kind of weak in the voice, but anyway, I'm here and I'm glad to be here. Amen. Uh, before I get started, I would like to ask how many feasts have you been in? And I'll start in the one, one feast and then work up. I do it every year, Michael. Uh, so is anybody here that's celebrating the feast for the first time? All right, good deal. Good deal. Uh, how about second feast? Third? Fourth? Fifth? Sixth? It goes all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> He'll get it right. Yeah. <laughs> I know Tommy. He'll, he'll get it right. Seventh? There we go. Seventh feast. Eighth? There. Them guys are my grandson. Uh, ninth? Seventeenth. That's my granddaughter. Seventeenth feast. Time flies. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. I'm gonna say I'm in that neighborhood. Around twenty. Twenty feast. I had gap years. Good deal. Uh, twenty. First, 22nd, yeah. there, 22nd feast, there you go. Uh, 23rd, 24th, mm, good deal. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 26th, there you go, 27th, 28th, there you go, 28th, 29th, 30th, 
got some 16. 16. Sixty-two. I'm back here. Sixty-two. She'll walk into the room and say, why am I here? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, share that kind of stuff. <laughs> why are we at God's Feast of Tabernacles? Why are we here? As we just heard, some people have been 75, 62, I mean, why are we here? What, what are we doing here? Um, the speakers at this feast, Roger and myself, and uh, who? Leon, the speakers, all the speakers, may try to cover this in their own way. Why are we here? I'm going to try to cover it with obedience to God, obedience, trust in God, and love of God. We're here to obey God. What's one reason that we might, one of the reasons we're here to obey God, if you will, Turn to uh, Deuteronomy, the Deuteronomy 16, Deuteronomy 16, verse 13 through 15. Verse 13, you shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Well, that's what we're doing this week. When you have gathered from your threshing floor the, and from your wine press. Verse 14, and you shall rejoice in your feasts. You, your son, your daughter, your male servant, and your female servant, and the Levite, the, and the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow within your gates. Seven days, that's what we're doing, seven days you shall keep a sacred feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses. And he shows this place this year. 
He, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce, in all your works, in all of your hands, so that you surely rejoice. That's what we're doing here. We're rejoicing. In Acts 5, Acts 5, I got my Bible ma ma <laughs> marked. I can, I should be able to turn to these. <laughs> uh, Acts 5. I'll get there. Acts 5, verse 29. Acts 5, verse 29, and, and Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God. That's what we're doing. We're obeying God. We're here. This is our feast, God's feast. We ought to obey God rather than men. Verse 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you martyred by hanging on a tree. Him, God, has exalted to his right hand to be the Prince and Savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we, are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God to He has given to those who obey Him. We're here to obey God. We are here to obey God. In uh, Deuteronomy, Moses is stating the law, and uh, that's the Torah, it's known to us, the Torah, God's law. This testing of my, mankind started back in the Garden of Eden. You can read about that in Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis 2. Genesis 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you shall be made, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. God started back then to see who would obey him, obey God. And we've, <laughs> mankind has failed for a long, a long time. At least six, what, 6,000 years? Um, in Le 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 Leviticus, Leviticus 23, Leviticus 23, verse 33, Leviticus 23, verse 33. And the Lord, that's the one that become Christ, spoke to Moses saying, that was the Lord speaking, speak to the children of Israel saying, on the 15th day of the seventh month, you shall be, it shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. For seven days, 
unto the Lord. On that first day, there shall be a holy congregation. We've done that already. The first day, we had the first day. You shall do no customary, customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer uh, offering made by far. That was, we don't, we're not required to make offerings. That Christ was our offering. But on the six, on the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer a, no an offering made by far to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. I think you got the sermon, Michael, on the last day. Yes, we will have the last day. Uh, uh, let's see, verse 39, same chapter, verse 39. And on the fifth day of that seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day there shall be a Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day a Sabbath rest. And you shall take of take yourselves on the first day fruit of the beautiful tree branches of some palm trees, the broth, 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 boughs, I get it, boughs of the leafy trees and the wills of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. I think we have a sukkah back here. We have, we're doing that, right? We're, we took our leafy trees. I think. Yeah, we got a sukkah. We were obeying God. Uh, we are here to obey God. In uh, First Peter. First Peter. First Peter. Verse four. Do what? Uh, 1 Peter 4, verse 17. First, 1 Peter 4, verse 17. He's talking to all, all of us here. For judgment, for the time has come for the judgment to begin on the house of God, that's us. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel? All over the other. I hate to be them, but anyway. The house of God, the judgment is on us now. The house of God. The second thing of want to try to talk about is uh, we're here to learn to trust God. We're here to learn to trust God. In, uh, back in Deuteronomy, oh, this is, we're going to wear this out. Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, verse 11. I'm, I'm going to try something here. I'm, I'm portraying trust, trust in God. And then in uh, verse 11, 
you shall rejoice before the Lord your, your God. My point is, in rejoicing, we learn to trust God. You can't, we can't rejoice and not trust God. I mean, some people, it's giving this feast, they're all, they're putting it all, all on the table. They're tr rejoicing, truly rejoicing before God. I mean, I've never heard this rejoice put in the context of trust. Trust, you must trust, tr you must trust God to truly re rejoice. I mean, you you people know how, how to rejoice. In uh, Malachi, the book of Malachi, uh, see, where is that at? Malachi. Yeah. Just after the book of Jonah, Malachi, verse, uh, yeah, yeah, sandwiched in between it. Uh, Malachi 7, verse 5. Micah, I'm sorry. Micah, I'm sorry. Micah, verse 5. I'll get it right. Mal Micah, verse 7, verse 5. Do not trust a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who fears, who lies in your bosom. For the son dishonors his father, the daughter rises against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies are the men within his, whole, his own household. Therefore, I will look on the Lord. I will wait for my God, my salvation, my God will hear me. No, you, I mean, when, it, when you know God won't let you down. You can trust God. I can trust God. God will not let us down. Other people may or may not. Probably, if their life depended on it or whatever, they may let you down, but there's one thing that we can rely on. God will not let us down. God will never let us down. And God knows best for us. God will not let us down. In uh, Psalms, I mean, I think this was the scripture today, <laughs> verse uh, 37, verse... Chapter 37, I'm sorry. That's okay. We follow you. Verse 30, uh, Psalms, verse 37. And I'm just going to focus in on 3 through 5. Psalms 37, 3 through 8. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness and the light and justice at noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
and do not fret that were sprung out. Do not fret in whom who prospers in this way, because the man who brings wickedness, the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. I mean, every time we spread, it causes harm. God will see it. God knows best, right? God will see us through. In uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, first one. Second Corinthians, first one. One through ten. I mean, Second uh, Corinthians, chapter one, eight through ten. Second Corinthians, chapter one, eight through ten. We did, do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. This is a, 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 a Apostle Paul speaking. We don't, no, do not want you to be ignorant of the trouble which came to us in Israel, in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we desired, we des despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in, our, in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises from the dead, who delivered us so great, great a death, and who does deliver us in whom we trust, he will deliver us. I mean, if you can't trust God, you can't trust no, nobody. I mean, and besides that, who else can raise us from the dead? Who can raise the dead but God? God can, can and will raise us from the dead. In uh, First Timothy four, First Timothy four, verse ten. First Timothy. Well, there it is. First Timothy four. Chapter 4, verse 10. To this end, we both, that's Paul and uh, Timothy, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. We trust Him, who is the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. Then words are written to us. We trust in God. He is the Savior of all mankind. Now, we we're here to learn about love, love of God. This should have been maybe the easiest of all of them for me. But it turned out that love, as I studied this and got ready, tried to get ready for this, love become harder, the hardest of these for me. Because for one thing, define love. I mean, what is love? Another thing, it could take many directions. 
I mean, services, love, some of the study group that we're in, they said, well, love is about service. It is. That's love. Uh, we just, ex we went through a split and we found that some of the uh, people there weren't showing love. I mean, what is love? So, we have, we've covered obedience and trust, but what is love? And it can go several ways. Uh, we have some really good examples here of love. I mean, uh, we see it all around us, the love around us. But in Kentucky lingo, <laughs> we ain't there yet. We'll, I mean, we will grow even more. We will learn to love one another. We will learn to love. Back in, uh, we spent some time in uh, Corpus Christi and one of the elder, uh, deacons down there in Corpus Church said, you can't out love God. And don't even try. I mean, God is, you can't out love him. I mean, that was uh, Lamar Smith. Something met him. But uh, in uh, Romans 8, Romans 8, verse 30, let's see, 32 to 35. Romans 8, verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with, with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Verse 34, who is he who condemns? It is, it is Christ who died, and furthermore, it is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nobody can separate us. If we, it's only us that can separate us from God. That's right. It's only us. Nobody. I mean. Some of us, some people maybe in this room, will lose their life eventually. But nobody can separate us from God, only us. Uh, I <laughs> can't think, of, uh, I'm thinking about uh, Christopher, my grandson, Christopher. We was in a bad place. I mean, he was in trouble with with the law. The law was after him, and he was in in uh, in, in being interviewed by the uh, uh, police officer, the detective, and he. I said, Christopher, this looks really bad for you. I mean, the arrow is pointing directly at you. It, it shows you're guilty. And he said, Granddad, if God is with me, who can be against me? 
and that the way it turned out. He was innocent of all crimes. It just looked like him. It was a neighbor across the street. Remember that? Christopher. He said, I think that's in, uh, it's in Romans 8. If God is with us, who can be against us? I mean, tornadoes, earthquakes. No. God, if God is with us, who can be against us? In uh, uh, the book of John, verse 14, the book of John, verse 14, Verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 24. He who does not love does not keep my words. This is Christ speaking. And he and the word which you hear is not mine, but the the fathers who sent me. We're here to obey God, to love God. And it was the words of Jesus. Him who does not obey me does not love me, does not love God. In uh, First John, the book of First John, You'd think I could find it. I've got it marked. <laughs> anyway, First John. The book of First John, chapter 3. Verse 1 and... First John, verse... Chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it not, knows not him. Beloved, that's us, beloved, now we are the children of God. It has not been seen or revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Do you ever think of that? We are the children of God. That's pretty awesome. That's a study in itself, a sermon in itself. I tried that last year. Anyway, we are the children of God. That's pretty awesome. Amen. In uh, First John, chapter four, verse. Four, first chapter. I'm, I'm sorry. First John, chapter four, verse eight. He who does not love does not know God, because God is love. God is agape. Love. That's what we're trying to do here at this feast. Learn to be like God. Show love for each other and the world. God is love. That's, I mean, that's what He is. And uh, it was kind of difficult for me, but I mean, where to go with this? What is love? I mean, it's a feeling. It's, it's, 
One thing for sure, we're not God, but we were trying to learn to love each other in the world. And back in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy for chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, mm-hmm. verse 5 and 6. Mm-hmm. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And those, and these words which I command you today you shall be in your heart. Moses was trying in God's words, love the God all the way. All the way. God is love. Um, <laughs> I got to get a little back at my granddaughter, uh, Jasmine. <laughs> she said, "Granddad, if if you get up there and you freeze up or you get don't know what to say, just say, well, I say, Hallelujah, praise <laughs> God." <laughs> I tell her, get you back. <laughs> Uh, John uh, in the book of John verse four, uh, chapter 14 the book of John chapter 14 verse 15 if you love me keep my commandments that's what we're trying to do I, I, I emphasize trying we try to keep God's commandments. Because, why do we do that? We love God. That's what he really wants us to love him. We love, we're trying to love God. In uh, Matthew 22, Matthew 22, Uh, Matthew 22, verse 37 through uh, 40. I think Jesus is uh, quoting what we just read back in the Old Testament. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first commandment. The second Verse 39, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two two commandments hang all the law and all uh, and the prophets. Love God. That's all he wants. Us to learn to love him. I mean it may be easier for women to love, I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're a little different. Women are, seem to be different. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's all God wants us to learn to love Him and to love each other and the world. God is love, right? God is love. In the in to, to end this, let's turn to the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes was uh, written by Solomon. In, in, uh, in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, the 13th verse, the very end of the book, 
is Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14. We, we, let's, let's just read it. Solomon says, let us hear the c conclusion of the whole matter. That's what we're trying to do. State the conclusion. And uh, I, I found it very interesting in the, I looked up that word fear, fear God. That don't, to me, it just it ain't right. I looked it up in Strong's, and the Strong's, that word is transfer, translated in fear, for fear is revere. That makes sense to me, revere God. Let's read it that way. Revere God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For the God will bring every good work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it's good or evil. They're all here. Love, trust, and obey. Solomon summarizes it all. I see them all. I hope you do. Obey, trust, and love, they're all here because God can see the beginning from the end. We have already had. He knows how it will be. He knows how it will turn out. And he, in the end, we win. God wins in the end. That is why we're here. Thank you very, very much, Gary. My family and I have known the Hall, especially Gary, um, when we first moved down here to Kentucky, and we found out that the Church of God was not completely destroyed, and that there was a congregation where Sabbatarians were meeting, and uh, that was back in the early 2000s, if I remember correctly, looking at my wife, because my memory's not all that good. It was 2000 exactly when we first met Gary and I remember the sermonettes that Gary was allowed and permitted to give and he would give the most articulate and passionate and uh, <clears throat> incredible sermonettes there in the, uh, was it Lions Club we were meeting in originally? Yeah. At the Lions Club there and, uh, and, and he's always been a, tr a tremendous inspiration, warm and loving and articulate. You know, I've mentioned John Beasley to all of you here uh, with uh, his health crisis and that he's a walking miracle. Gary is a walking miracle because he had a very horrible health crisis during the feast. What, no, no, we were at Winter Weekend. Winter Weekend, that's right. That's when it was a couple of years ago. And uh, to have Gary up here, being able to share his heart, and overcoming all of the things that happened with the health crisis that he had. It's a living miracle that Gary was up here being able to articulate as best he can. What I know is in his heart. Yeah, yeah, he had a 3% chance of surviving what he had. Uh, oh, she, Sarah's going to explain. You, we, we sent a prayer request out to Winter Family Weekend. We did. Okay, yeah. that, that and the other prayer request we had was the beginning of that loving miracle that God performed. Um, when we got reports back of everybody just stopping and praying, yes. I mean, and that's when it started. And the love of God, he's a living example of the love of God. He is. And so, well, Gary, thank you so much for the amount of effort. I know what's in your heart. I know how desperate you want to get everything out. And we're so very thankful you were able to share with us. So thank you so very, very much. And Gary picked out, hit the song he wants. What page number? 
All hail the power. All hail the power. Page number one. Page number one. Okay. That's that's Gary, that's Gary's choice. Okay. I don't know how we got. It. All right. What? Okay. Closing song or no? All right, so the closing song is going to be 155, and then we'll have the right before the uh, closing prayer, which will be given to us by Mr. Jim Robinson. I just have a quick announcement.
awesome. That's terrific. Um, Mr. Jim Robinson, you're up for a closing prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here with you at your festival site, the place that you have chosen. We ask that you put into our hearts the meaning of your festival days and the beautiful picture it paints of your plan of salvation. We ask that you watch over all the activities. We ask that you find them all pleasing to your heart. We ask you put your hedge of protection around us and your angels to guide us. We ask that you bless the nourishment, the food to the nourishment of our bodies that we're going to partake of later on. We ask your holy blessing on all the people around the world that are at your festivals and that are your family, that you watch over and protect and guide them. And we ask all of us in your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 All right, hey, before y'all take off, just real quick announcement. Uh, this evening, chill and supper. Uh, just uh, come on in about six-ish, and we'll all have a great chili supper. And I forgot to mention, tomorrow afternoon, well, before I get to that, Carol's seminar is at 3. Where she'll have her, uh, what is a woman's seminar is this afternoon at 3. Forgot to mention the picnic tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we have the picnic down at the pavilion. We are grilling hamburgers and hot dogs, and we have condiments. Bring chips, and you guys bring a little something, chips, salad, picnic stuff. But we're grilling the dogs and the hamburgers for you down there at the pavilion, where they're supposed to be nice. So we we'll look forward to seeing you then. That'll be lunch. Oh, and one announcement that I'm not aware of. All right, we want to thank you very much for all your prayers over Kristen's situation. Sorry. That ramp, somebody's going to get hurt. I mean, we've been pushing her up and down a very steep ramp the last two days. And the guys are helping, and it's working. But it's just not a good situation. It's going to work. They're making it. Things are getting through to the upper hands here, and everyone's doing everything they can. And tomorrow, she's probably going to have that a good ramp. So keep praying, y'all. Keep praying, because everyone on deck is like doing everything they can do. And I wanted to tell you to give you an update. And um, it's just a good situation. It's everything's working out. The bathroom situation is going to be fine. Um, she can fit into our bathroom at the house over here, so don't worry about that either. Right. Awesome. Yeah.